Hello, I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. And this is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast with actual good costuming for once, because this week it's The Curse of Fenric. Written by uh, Ian Briggs. Directed by Nicholas Mallet. And aired in October and November of 89. Yeah, so, uh, you know, actually good uh, villain costume. Once. For one of the villains. Uh, yeah. well, I, mean, yeah, I, mean, the other, yeah, I mean, the other one was just uh, pick your favorite serial specific character, and that's uh, that's Fenric now. <laughs> well, the the Hemovores looked kind of cool, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, But I don't think either of us really followed the plot of this too much. Much like last week. <laughs> um... um well, last week we didn't follow the plot because the plot wasn't that followable. This week, I think it's just I don't know. I I was just more in it for the experience. No, I actually kind of just zoned out. <laughs> but yeah, the plot this week was a little bit convoluted. I think. Um, kind no, of like... I, I've, I don't know. Maybe I felt like I just wasn't paying enough attention because at the end of the serial, I went, "Wow, I really want to rewatch this and actually pay more attention to what's going on because I think I could really like this." Yeah. Um, I mean, I zoned out just for episode two, and then I tried to pay attention to episodes three and four, but after losing episode <laughs> two, it was just a lost cause for me. Um, but it's okay. I think I think I know enough to try piece it together. Uh, I if, think. An, if anyone's listening to this, who it's their first time listening to us, this isn't normal, by the way. We no. actually usually do pay attention <clears throat> to the things we watch. Um, I think it's just... Uh, <laughs> it's just the curse it's of Fenric. It's, I was going to say <laughs> fatigue, and also the fact that we're so close to the end of the uh, the series. Also, I, I, I had an incredibly busy the week this week, so yeah, I did too, and I watched <clears throat> these at like two in the morning. So, um, so there's my excuse. No. <laughs> but we will endeavor to try and make it an accurate description of the plot, and it begins. Now speak for yourself. <laughs> with, <laughs> I mean, we usually try to be vaguely accurate on this show. <laughs> now speak for yourself. I, I actually just try and sabotage everything <laughs> all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Guess the secret's out. <laughs> Great. <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> so, it begins with the Doctor Some and Ace Germans. landing. Actually, the Russian. Oh, Russians. <laughs> Whatever. I actually did think they were German for the first episode because they imply that they're Germans because they're, like, going to possibly attack this English encampment, I guess, Beach. to you, like, the Russians and the, the English are... Kind of on the same side for World War II, so... Oh, yeah, there was that whole thing. Well, I read, apparently, in the novelization, the whole thing about the nurse being a a Russian agent, which wasn't in this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't know. Was, yeah. Um, it, yeah, I... I... I, th- I thought they were German, because they were attacking this English encampment, but then... Apparently, we don't know what Russian or German sounds like. Um, yeah, they're actually talking in Russian with subtitles, uh, which is an interesting choice, I suppose. Yeah, really weird font for the subtitles there. <laughs> 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 and um, I don't know, the the act, there's only like two lines in Russian, I guess. Um, but they were just like the worst and most flatly delivered lines ever. <laughs> well, then it's completely undermined because they land on the beach because they're on a boat coming into the beach and they land on the beach and, and then the commander's like, "All right, everything in English from now on." I'm like, "But why?" It's because they don't, so they don't get found out, even though they all have accents. <laughs> um, but what was weird was there were like two or three more lines in Russian that didn't get subtitled, and then they were like, "All right, boys, it's English time. We're definitely English." <laughs> um, I guess sort of parallels the whole Viking thing that was a big deal in this, because um, you know the Vikings came from um, uh, you know, Scandinavia and landed in England, so mm-hmm. Russia's sort of in that direction. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of over there. If you go through Sweden and Norway, you you'll hit Russia <clears throat> in Finland. In Finland, yeah. Finland always getting in the way. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then we cut to the Doctor and Ace landing 
in the village, I think. I think they just kind of wander out of the TARDIS again. Um, and they're like, we're in this village. Oh yeah, Ace is like, this is a super secret encampment. Why aren't the guards just p- patrolling the place to kill people? And in my mind, I'm like, it's a super secret encampment. I feel like putting guards would give <laughs> that away. But no, apparently they actually do have guards because they get caught by guards pretty much right away. And the doctor bluffs his way out of it. Yeah. So <laughs> starts yelling at them about how this is an inspection and he needs to see the commander immediately. And they're just like, oh, all right. <laughs> can't end the classic series without a ton more incompetent guards <laughs> can't end the classic series with the doctor just getting gunned down by some randos oh wait <laughs> awkward wait is that what happens <laughs> in the tv movie uh, the doctor steps out of the TARDIS gets gunned down by a gang fight in san francisco <laughs> <All right. laughs> Wasn't it a running joke during, like, season two or three that one of the characters was just going to get sniped by an unknown sniper? I think that was just a joke that we made up. I don't think that was anything no, that yes, actually... that's what I meant. Into, oh, yeah. Turn... <laughs> yeah, so they're really, uh, yeah. Well, they're playing what? that uh, guard being totally incompetent thing, except the, the Doctor does the same thing to the Russians later as well, so that was curious yeah i can't end the serial without a really incompetent depiction of russians <laughs> actually you can end the serial and show without that so yeah yeah well apparently they didn't want to i mean they they were equal opportunity incompetency in the serial those incompetent englishmen competent russians uh all right and a slightly less incompetent guy who was building a computer to crack german codes yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> Who they meet now. <clears throat> yeah, they get brought to... Um, the, Judson. The, yeah, is Judson his was his name. I didn't know anyone's name in this serial. Um, apparently he was inspired by um, Alan Turing, I think is mm-hmm. his name. Yeah, Alan Turing, who invented the... Uh... With other people. He's the only <laughs> one who gets credited, but he had a team of people working with him at Bletchley Park to... Uh, invent one of the earliest computers to crack the Enigma machine. So that's why this computer is named the Ultima machine. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And apparently his being in a wheelchair was inspired by uh, Alan Turing's being gay. Not sure how that, what that had to do with, (laughs) but yeah, that's what I read. So I, I think they're doing that thing that they did in Battlefield where they're dealing with a slightly touchy topic in a kind of clumsy way again. Uh, yes. Uh, it kind of makes it seem like they're saying, like, yeah, being gay is a crippling yeah, disability. That, that's that's exactly kind of messed what, up. why I'm saying they're dealing with it in a pretty clumsy <laughs> way in this serial. Uh, <laughs> um. Um, but anyway, yeah, he's he's made this machine to to crack codes. Yeah, including that uh, Viking code. Yeah, the runes. So they've been also studying the Viking runes that have been left in England, um, which is a real thing. You know, you can still go to like certain parts of mm-hmm. England or whatever and see the Viking runes and stuff. Um, and he's also working on like some logic puzzle thing, and Ace comes in and she like solves it right away. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, whoa, this girl must be a genius. Well, I mean, apparently not. She failed her chemistry t- tests. Uh, yeah. I... According to the doctor, anyway, <laughs> later on. I... Oh, yeah, according to um, Fenric. <laughs> I didn't get that scene at the end, but yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> so, the doctor... So the soldiers, I guess, don't fully believe that the doctor's there for an inspection, so he just borrows Judson's typewriter, types up a supposedly official letter from the... I guess English equivalent of Homeland Security, and then forges a signature on it and hands it to the soldiers. Like, I think you'll see that this gives us permission to be here. The soldiers like, oh yes, sorry. <laughs> so, um, and I think we meet, not meet, but we see the uh, Hitler cosplayer guy, yeah, Millington. <laughs> yeah, Millington. Um, it just shows it, you get like a panning shot of his office. And you're like, <laughs> oh, it's it's Hitler. Yeah, maybe that's why he's so intent on destroying the Russians in this serial. 
So apparently it's an exact replica of Hitler's office, which has like a specific name, but I don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> except he didn't really get the mustache right. Yeah, he needs, uh, he needs he to work needs on to it. He needs to trim the sides pretty m- yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, he's close. <laughs> Give it a 7 out of 10 for accuracy. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, Millington wants... Millington's just off the deep end at this point. I didn't know what Millington wanted. Millington wants to bomb Germany with these gas weapons he's developed, basically violating all human rights concerns. So the Doctor and Ace get taken to, uh, I guess, their quarters. They meet... um, Ace's grandma. Yes. (laughs) Who you don't find out it's her grandma until way at the end, but you do find out, except you think Ace knows, but she actually doesn't, so it comes as a shock to her, and you're like, wait, I thought you already knew that, Ace. Maybe that was just me. (laughs) I thought she figured it out, like, uh, midway through episode three, which is when I figured it out. Um, But we'll get to that scene that I'm specifically talking about later. Um, So, this, they they come across the... um, they call themselves the girls, but it's like a women's yeah, it's uh, thing. Like Jean and Phyllis. That was the two girls' names. <laughs> uh, yeah, again, I didn't know anyone's names in this. Um, but apparently, they had like this separate, um, like job for them to do, which is intercept radio. Oh things. yeah, they had that room of uh, woman uh, intercepting. I think it's naval transmissions. I think that's what they were doing. They're like, yeah, it's that's us. Gene and Phyllis, uh, Ace runs into like outside, and they're like, hey, we should yeah. uh, we should meet up again. And Ace is like, we'll meet at Maiden's Point to go swimming, <laughs> to go swimming. And they're like, okay. So then and they then, go then home. G- yeah, Gene and Phyllis get like accosted by the, someone, probably it's their mother, mm, grandmother, guardian, I don't guardian know, guardian of some sort. Um, she's like, don't you go to Maiden's Point? That's where people go to die. <laughs> Shouldn't say that, but uh, I think she kind of heavily implies it. <laughs> Uh, um and they're like yeah yeah we're going anyway and and then ace meets her mom as a baby yeah she's like oh what a cute baby i'm kind of confused as to whether or not ace was adopted or like that was her real mom and then her real mom died or abandoned her and then (laughs) yeah i don't know (laughs) kind of forgot the exposition parts of Dragonfire, but it's okay because Ace won't be around for too much longer. <laughs> I mean, neither will the <laughs> Seventh Doctor, but... <clears throat> yeah, I mean, come to think of it, just looking back on this serial, the Doctor didn't do much except, you know, drive the plot forward when necessary. It was more of an Ace serial. Yeah, and that's okay, yeah, I think. Yeah, I guess okay. it is okay. Yeah. Especially since we've had... Um... 10. 26 seasons of oh, the so Doctor. I was going to say 10 Seventh Doctor <laughs> serials. And, uh, so. Yeah, and I, as I always say, I like the companions more than the Doctor. And Ace is probably up there as one of my favorite companions. Yeah, especially now that she actually has backstory. And, and some semblance of character development. <laughs> well, now you, fi- you in this series you'll finally find out how she got transported from 1980-whatever to... Yeah. random space asteroid ice world whether you choose to believe it or not is a different story i believe it uh i mean yeah sure i guess i have no choice but to believe it um except i also believe that it was retconned so yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I kind of feel like ian briggs wrote that whole time storm thing into dragon fire without ever having any expectation of having to follow up on it on his own <laughs> then got given this suit and was like uh i guess i'll have to explain it he didn't have to follow up on it he could have just not mentioned it like every other writer yeah but then it would have been way worse maybe i don't know <clears throat> anyway the doctor and ace uh go down to the beach and the doctor's like stay away from the water <laughs> And then leaves. And Ace to is go. like, don't worry, I hate swimming anyway. <laughs> Not sure why I promised to go swimming with those girls. Because <laughs> then they go into the water, and it, they tell Ace to come in. She's like, nah, swimming's stupid, and you two are stupid for doing it. Oh, there's also the giant sign that says dangerous undercurrents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that. Uh, <laughs> um, they're also on like. <laughs> 
probably what's probably the most British beach possible, which is like just sharp rocks leading up to the freezing cold water. <laughs> oh, it looks freezing cold anyway. I made mention of it in my notes. I was like, man, that water looks cold as hell. <laughs> And uh, what what's the cliffhanger to episode one? I honestly don't remember. <laughs> was uh, it the was it Jean and what's her name getting vampired? Phyllis. Oh no! It's uh, oh yeah, Ace and the Doctor get captured by the the Russians right at the end. Oh of yeah. Oh yeah, they find um, a dead guy. Yeah, there's a couple dead soldiers lying around. They get killed by this uh, underwater. Menace. <laughs> um, there's actually, I don't know if this actually played into the serial or like the plot at all. I'm, I want to say it didn't, but there's like this sunken Viking boat nearby, and you keep getting shots of it, like first person shots of this menace it's, working around. Uh, it's stated in episode four that the ancient one got transported by Fenric to the Viking times and it came over to England on the Viking ship and that's how it ended up in England. Oh, I guess it was just hanging out underwater for yeah. a couple thousand years. Yeah, until Fenric showed up. <laughs> so Kind of like the Zygons. <laughs> 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 Yeah, come to think of it, there's a lot of aliens that just hang around on Earth right until the perfect moment to, to strike, and then they just so happen that moment is the exact moment the Doctor shows up. And they completely waste that moment. <laughs> like the Silurians, the Sea Devils, the Zygons, the Ancient One. Uh, Mordred? <laughs> I guess, not, not so much, but maybe. <laughs> kind of, yeah. That occult of witches in that one fourth Doctor serial. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, stones of yes, whatever it was. I don't... Power of Cruel, I think it was. No, Power of Cruel was uh, the one with John Leeson in it. The one that... Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was st- it was Stones of Blood. I don't oh, yeah, remember. that was it. Stones, yeah. of, stones of Blood. <clears throat> anyway... <laughs> The doctor talks to the Russian soldiers and somehow convinces them that the only way they'll survive this war is if they let the doctor rat them out to the English. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they let the doctor nice go. <laughs> I guess. Uncanny bluffing ability. Yeah, the, the doctor uh, rolled a 20 in his bluffing ability when he <laughs> set his stats. <clears throat> Yeah, we get all these cool shots of uh, this underwater tentacle whooping around, grabbing people. <laughs> Whoop de whopping. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> but um, it keeps getting intercut at the end of episode two. This is jumping ahead a little bit. But um, when they're deciphering the the Viking <clears throat> inscriptions, they're talking about this underwater evil that'll come to power when Fenric gets released. Yeah, and there's there's an ancient prophetic poem. There's always an ancient prophetic poem. You I mean, know, when you're discussing though, these the languages. The Vikings had this ancient one on their boat with them, so <laughs> they, I mean, this prophetic poem seems to have been, uh... True. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they make reference to um, somewhere called the North Way, which I didn't get until way later that that was Norway. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't pick up on that at all. So uh not that really uh, important, I guess, but yeah. Yeah, the doctor and Ace go to this church that's in the town and they meet the, yeah, the, the minister uh, dude, the priest. His name was uh uh priest. <laughs> it was just priest. <laughs> <laughs> and he became a priest. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an interesting concept for a story, actually, where the Doctor lands on a planet where everyone's name is just their profession and there's some sort of dystopian ruler. All uh, right, go ahead. <laughs> Write it. I will someday when I have more time. <laughs> um, still planning on writing... Well, not still, but now planning on writing Sontarans on Ice, The Ground is Lava. <laughs> <laughs> As a sequel to that other fanfic that I wrote... <laughs> Maybe, or a spiritual successor. Let's just say a spiritual successor. Not anyway. T- Tagana survived that one. So Tagana and both, and this is now as a sequel. Um, 
<laughs> sure. Um, the priest has um, this weird monologue, which I thought for some reason implied that he was going to be a villain. Because, <laughs> uh, I don't know, villains are usually the ones with monologues. Well, villains and the doctor, apparently. Uh, yeah, and the doctor. <laughs> Doctors might be a villain. I don't know. Some some people see him as villainous. A lot of people, a lot of characters actually That's see actually him as villainous. A, a plot point in the in the reboot. Huh. Someone brings up that like a lot of places you derive the word for medicine man from the doctor's name, whereas other places the word doctor means great warrior. Because <clears throat> so that's interesting. Huh. But yeah, it's not no. necessarily like a, a bad thing. Like no. uh, we're talking about the Vikings, like great yeah. warrior is like a, a compliment in like the Scandinavian. Uh, I mean, they were good at being warriors, yeah. but they also did a lot of other pretty terrible things to go along with that. Like uh, raping and pillaging all those villages that they conquered. <clears throat> uh, and like those those islands that they arrived on. Yeah. The ones that this serial takes place in. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, Wainwright has this, apparently the church has this record of everybody who's ever lived in the town since it was founded, ever. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, actually before the Doctor and Ace run into him, when they run into him, he's being attacked by Gene and Phyllis who have been hemophored. Yeah, they get turned into hemophores, um, which are just vampires. Yeah, JNT was like, let's not call them vampires. So let's just call them blood blood eaters. eaters. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, they bring this up now. I remember this that having a strong faith in something will ward off the hemovores. <clears throat> really, I didn't remember that. Yeah, and that's why the doctor had to break Ace's faith in him later on because uh -oh. the doctor had Ace had such strong faith in the doctor that the ancient one couldn't break through. Huh. Uh, okay. And that's well, that's that also how sense. Wainwright dies. He like has faith in, I guess, uh, the Bible. But the fact that these hemovores have shown up has has like shaken his faith. So his faith isn't strong enough to drive away the hemovores later on. That's when he dies. Huh. Okay. Yeah. So um, Phyllis and what's her name? You see them coming out of the water, and they're like all vampire makeup and. Um, they have, like, these extremely long nails, and it actually looks kind of creepy. Yeah. I will give this serial, you know, the, the point that um, a lot of the costuming slash uh, design-like decisions were actually pretty creepy. Like, when What's-His-Face opens his eyes, and they're all green, and he's Fenric now. That was, that was actually kind of disturbing. <clears throat> yeah. They don't really keep that effect up, um, but... Yeah, they slack a bit. Yeah. But, but then again, Fenric also, like, jumps bodies, so. <laughs> well, they also have that ex extremely over-the-top explosion later on. <clears throat> what, the one in the... The one with the, the underground house blows up. Uh, I thought you were talking about the one in the underground catacombs. <laughs> yeah, also that. That wasn't that over-the-top. <clears throat> yeah, that was. kind of under-the-top. <laughs> <laughs> so the Doctor is talking with Wainwright, and he reveals that he's got... Uh, he actually finds this... I guess, ancient English translation of the Viking runes. Yeah, wasn't the, the computer able to translate it? Yeah, that's... So, the Doctor and Ace take the translation to Judson. They're like, hey, look, we got the... Well, to Millington. And they're like, hey, we got this translation. And then Ace points out to Judson, when the Doctor's not there, that the computer could translate the runes. And Judson's like, oh, yeah, I can do that. And then the doctor's like, you know, we probably shouldn't tell Judson how to translate those runes. And Ace is like, ooh, <laughs> awkward. Later, <clears throat> Judson actually translates them and he, he goes, ah, this computer is amazing. It could even tell us what this ancient language means. And the doctor's like, it can tell us what it um, says, not what it means. Which is true. Yeah. A lot of language is interpretation and inflection and, in, yeah, connotations rather than denotations that's the word <clears throat> yeah episode two ends with the computer going out of control printing things i think i think that was Wasting episode two and not episode a ton three of paper heck if i remember <laughs> I'll probably check that Honestly. actually uh yeah that is uh that is <laughs> the, the thing to episode two 
But computer's going crazy, putting out like 10 times the speed. The LinkedIn's like, can you read it? And Judson's like, no, it's printing too fast. It's such a waste of paper. I mean, it's printing on like one inch wide tape paper. It's still a waste. (laughs) Yes, but it's less of a waste than if it was printing on like A4. (laughs) Legal paper. (laughs) Although the speed at which it's going is probably actually be less of a waste if it was printing on legal paper and printed multiple lines. (laughs) Plus, like, who uses legal paper? Lawyers. Actually, I don't. I I would assume lawyers because it's legal. Yeah, like, makes sense, but yeah, yeah. The American paper system is so confusing. (laughs) I personally use, um, you know, what they were printing on, like those little tiny strips. Yeah, it really annoys people, but uh, I do it anyway. No, no. (laughs) All your essays on the tiny tape strip. It's on a scroll. Like a vellum scroll. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you carve it into a stone <laughs> so the doctor and ace are like well this is a problem and so <laughs> they're like no this is fine <laughs> <laughs> get this is okay <laughs> i comic with a dog and the house is burning down this is fine this is okay <laughs> what is that a meme <laughs> i've never of. seen this it's, it's just a comic and the dog's like drink is a dog and he's drinking tea and the house is burning down around him <laughs> then the second panel he's like this is fine <laughs> <laughs> right so the Doctor and Ace go back to Wainwright, I think, and the house starts getting run over with hemovores, and Ace escapes to the roof, and she puts down this ladder that she apparently carries with her. It's very thin and hard to use <laughs> ladder. We get some. I guess kind it's of... a military like ladder. Yeah, it's made to be portable rather than climbable. <laughs> we get some interesting point of view shots from Ace climbing down the ladder. We do. Yeah. There's okay. A, there's a shot looking <laughs> up the ladder, and you see the arm just go down, and then it immediately cuts to a long shot of Ace climbing down the ladder. It was like 10 seconds. <laughs> and then uh, the hemovores start climbing up the ladder, and Ace is like, I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> Who knew zombies could climb? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> so, luckily, the Russians have shown up. Keeping up that educational aspect of the show 25 years <laughs> later. <laughs> What, so they learn that vampires can climb ladders? Yes. <laughs> Pro tip, if there's a vampire apocalypse, <laughs> they can climb ladders. Yeah, well, the Russians show up. <clears throat> can save they the climb day. ladders? Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, Russians can also climb ladders. <clears throat> <clears throat> Actually, no, I don't think they take the ladder. I think they go up the stairs. <laughs> I... Well, they start shooting the... They start shooting the Hema voice. To no uh, avail. You know conventional weapons aren't going to work. They do fall down. The Hema voice do fall down. Um, yeah. But then they just get right back up again. Like a champ. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not about how hard you get hit. It's about how hard you keep on hitting. They, they should have just um, played... Uh, What's that song from the end of Karate Kid? You're the best around during this death montage. <laughs> you know that song exists because they couldn't get the rights to the Rocky theme. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do know that. <laughs> uh, I was watching an episode of Bob's Burgers recently and they, they played that, but it was one of the characters on the show singing it. <laughs> so- I only mention that because I've been like obsessed with Bob's Burgers recently. should watch it. Yeah, you've mentioned it's a good show, but uh, with all this time, I have <laughs> <clears throat> maybe spring break. <laughs> so Ace goes back into the church, and this is when the doctor reveals that if you have strong faith, you can ward off the hemovores. So he wards them off. But his strong faith in something. Eh. He doesn't state what he has a strong faith in. <laughs> yeah, just based on. <sighs> the doctor's entire character not only for this incarnation but for others you kind of wonder what he has a strong faith in (laughs) Um, his companions maybe yeah maybe he's a strong faith in ace (laughs) yeah let's just go with that (laughs) strong face (laughs) so they now they go into the catacombs 
for yeah, some cool. reason. Oh yeah, we f- forgot the part with um, those two guys who only show up to uncover this ancient vase. Okay, <laughs> or urn or whatever it was. <laughs> The ace picks it up and puts it in a bag and laid it on the doctor's like, where did you get this? This is the exact vase we've been looking for for the past 24 hours. Right, because Fenric was contained in, like, this vase or whatever. Um, and the two guys who uncover it, the one guy's like, is this ours? Do, do we need this? And the other guy's like, nope. So he's like, hmm, and he just tosses it over his shoulder. <laughs> um, but yeah, then ace picks it up, like you already mentioned. And they escape into the catacombs. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember why they go into the catacombs. I think because the roof has hemophores on it now. It's a pretty good reason to go into the catacombs. <laughs> so you know, if there's ever a vampire apocalypse, you know, you're gonna find me in the catacombs. <laughs> Just check the catacombs. That's where I'll be. I feel like you'd want to actually go go to the. Well, I guess it depends on the vampires because some some vampires can't handle the sun. You know. Oh, I thought <laughs> they just uh, sparkled in the sun. Maybe that's just me. It's a Twilight reference. In case you didn't know. Okay. (laughs) Making a sad (laughs) non-response. Team Edward. Okay, no. I don't know. I I haven't read Twilight podcast. Let's go. (laughs) I'd do it. I haven't read the books. They seem interesting. I I would read them. I haven't read them or watched the movies. Yeah, we can just watch the movies for triple play once we run out of trilogies or just decide to do them because we haven't really been doing trilogies. Are we going to include uh, groups of three? Include Fifty Shades of Grey in that? Sure. You know, Fifty Shades of Grey started as a Twilight fan fiction. Yeah. And then she changed all the names and published it. Yeah. So. And set it in Washington for absolutely no reason (laughs) and uses a lot of British terms. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's some good literature. <laughs> anyway, the ace damn it's the doctor and ace while well, she's a companion <laughs> yep. now. Um it had to happen eventually. The doctor and ace are in the catacombs and uh Wainwright's like, can't we like delay them or something? So the doctor turns to the two Russian soldiers like, Alright, you go back, delay them, two minutes, come after us. <laughs> The soldiers are like, okay. And then Wayne White, Wayne Rat, the doctor and Ace, get out of the catacombs. And Ace uses some Nitro 9, so they aren't forgetting that. Yeah. They run straight into Millington. Yeah. Who seals up the catacombs behind them, and the, then the doctor goes, gets really angry at Millington because the two Russian soldiers were still in there, and Millington's like, how oh, the Russians aren't people. <laughs> Well, he doesn't say that, but he does say the Russians don't. <laughs> we don't need to save the Russians. The doctor's like, but the Russians are your allies. And Millington's like, no one's our allies. <laughs> and we forgot the scene with Millington cracking that gas oh, vial yeah. and killing those four birds. Yeah. Um, did we even mention that he's planning on using, like, biological warfare? We I mentioned we the chemical warfare bombing Germany, but I yeah. didn't say why. They, they, te- they tested on animals. Um, birds and uh, the doctor as, as soon as he unleashes the chemical on the birds the doctor goes well that's just inhumane and I guess he was actually t- I thought he was talking about the birds which is true it is inhumane <laughs> but I, I guess he was actually talking about you know the inevitable use of that weapon if Wainwright has his way or not Millington sorry <laughs> I was gonna say the priest wants to bomb <laughs> Germany hang on a minute <laughs> Like I said, I didn't know anyone's name. Yeah, Millington is like, imagine a whole fleet of these bombs dropped on Berlin. <laughs> and the doctor's like... Fleet of bombs? Okay. And the, the doctor's like, well, that's well, that's just not okay. <laughs> He's like, I can imagine that. It's not really something I, like, fantasize in a positive way about, like you do, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Millington's lying in his bed like, yes, uh, drop those bombs. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> uh anyway, um Judson kind of Well Millington is possessed. Yeah, Millington grabs the vase from Ace and <laughs> and smashes it and it possesses Judson. And this then, is Fenric, so that's this is <clears throat> Fenric and his curse. Yeah, I actually really liked this cliffhanger because it wasn't like, oh, the Doctor's in peril or anything. Because Fenric's like, we play the game again. 
time lord yeah like, whoa that's pretty so the, cool the cliffhanger is oh fenwick knows the doctor what's gonna happen now yeah i thought they might reveal that he's a a, a past villain that we've seen before um but, but no, no. <laughs> although they're pretty cool though. they do reveal that the doctor defeated fenwick before and that's why he was trapped in the vase was because the doctor trapped him in the vase before yeah right <clears> before <throat> judson gets possessed the computer like shocks him and he gets pushed like probably five feet or so back and yeah I, I mentioned this in my notes you can just see him uh wheeling himself back in his wheelchair <laughs> <laughs> so yeah oh we also didn't mention that uh What's her name gets a letter that her husband was on that ship. Oh yeah, Issa's sunk. grandma gets a letter that um, her, husband. her husband died. Well, is Issa's missing grandfather. presumed dead? No, it th- wasn't. The letter said it, they sunk he was the missing. Ship. Yeah, he. They said the ship was sunk and his body is missing, presumed dead. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's like Ace's grandpa just shows up and is like, "I survived." <laughs> <laughs> like in uh what was that movie with jim carrey in it where his whole i'm spoiling it but his whole life is just a tv show and they bring okay never mind it's uh the truman, oh, the truman show. show yeah the truman show they bring his dad back i don't know why it reminded me of that but it's not really a spoil that was like a main plot point of the movie well it was it's, one of the earliest plot points in the movie was I, that i didn't know the first time i oh. watched that movie i just <laughs> randomly watched it without knowing anything about it so oh. <laughs> i was pretty surprised i was okay. like oh his whole life's a show wow Well, uh, the doctor's like, this is a problem. Again. <laughs> a lot of cliffhangers in that Everything's computer fine. room. Everything's <laughs> fine. A, a lot of cliffhangers in that computer room. Yeah, it was a pretty cool uh, room, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, they're trying to shut off the power, and the power's stuck, and Ace's like, I can't pull it! And the doctor's like, pull! She's like, I can't! <laughs> and the like, let me try. And he can't, and then that's when, what's his name, gets zapped. But anyway, Millington now has this weird thing. And he's like, the chains of Fenwick have been broken. The world will end now. Apparently, he just wants to wipe the world out now <laughs> instead of just Germany. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's just uh, out of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody somewhere had to give Millington this post <laughs> at this no- nowhere English facility. And they're like, damn it, why did we do that? <laughs> Station him there. He can't do any harm there. Okay, no. Let's see. That was their mistake. Was <laughs> positioning him on this church that was built. So when they first mentioned where the church was built, they're like, you know, this whole town, well, the church and the whole town was built on this ancient Viking burial ground. And I was like, well, yeah, well, that's not gonna come into play. <laughs> that's not gonna come back to bite them. No. <laughs> Just position Millington on this ancient Viking burial ground. <laughs> So the Doctor and Ace, I think, escape. They kind of just bolt, and they run into Soren, who's the Russian commander. Um, because Soren gets captured by Millington in Episode Three. He like he wants to talk with Millington and negotiate a truce, I guess. And Millington's like, "Yeah, no." <laughs> um, and Ace, the Doctor, and Soren are gonna get gunned down. Sh- Sure. Yeah, episode right. four is firing kind squad. of just a blur to me. Yeah, so they're going to get done, gunned down by that firing squad, but then Soren's men rescue them, so they kind of escape this. This whole so, sort of weird subplot when they got to help Soren escape before they're going to get gunned down by the firing squad, uh, where Ace is like either floating with or otherwise oh, distracting yeah. that guard. There was like this weird <clears throat> slash almost not even a part of the serial romantic subplot because there was that line later where ace tells her grandma like i never thought i'd get married but maybe now i i've changed my mind i don't know and i was like what in the past several <laughs> serials has made you change i guess it was something off screen or something we didn't see it was, I was like uh... what exactly made you change your mind about this ace <laughs> i didn't get anything from the past few serials or this one that would indicate that but okay you know all right and then there was like that weird scene with what's his name too so yeah, yeah. doesn't really amount to anything um kind of a... and I'm pretty sure they're not just gonna marry ace off next week that would be pretty lame terrible i mean considering and... both their contracts were optioned for another season i'm gonna say no yeah well that didn't stop them from killing perry bringing her back 
both from the dead and also, uh, oh yeah, I guess just from the dead since they retconned it. <laughs> so the doctor desperately needs a chess set because the last time he defeated Fenwick was with this chess puzzle, and Fenwick's still obsessed with trying to solve this chess puzzle. Yeah, we didn't mention we didn't mention all the mentions of chess in this serial, and the weird obsession with like the Viking themed chess sets. <laughs> Yeah, um, apparently that chess set in Silver Nemesis was uh, put there by Con- Fenric. Coincidentally and conveniently Viking themed. No, well, yeah, I don't know. Supposedly it was put there by Fenric, and supposedly it was supposed to be a reference to this, but I feel like they didn't have this <laughs> planned out that far ahead, so I'm just... No. <clears throat> Gonna have to go with no. But we can pretend that they didn't. That makes it sort of better. Just like Ian Briggs pretended that he did. <laughs> So, yeah, they need to get the chess set, so they go try to get the one in the computer room, and the doctor's like, no, Ace, don't touch that! <laughs> and she touches it, and it's a gas weapon, which somehow doesn't just immediately kill the Doctor and Ace, even though it kills those two soldiers later on, pretty immediately. Um, but that- there's also some explosives strapped under the table, so they do need to get out of there ASAP. Ace? Get it? Uh, yeah, I get it. <laughs> well, because Ace is like, Wow, why would they use gas weapons? If I was them, I would just strap some some TNT underneath the table. And the doctor's like, comically uh... look under the table, and they're like, oh, shoot, and they run out. Yeah, and they jump, and as they're jumping, the house blows up in the background. And if you look at the doctor's left hand, the umbrella it's goes... It's blown off, squirting blood now. <laughs> no, the umbrella goes flying out of the hand towards the camera and, like, narrowly misses the camera. And I'm like, well, somebody almost got hit right there. <laughs> Yeah, the doctor actually uses the umbrella as an umbrella in this serial because it starts raining and he just opens up the umbrella and they're just standing under the umbrella and I'm like, wow. Yeah, did you notice during all the uh, rain shots that you could just see the see clear the... blue sky yes. in the background? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they try to play it off. The doctor has this throwaway line like, this rain must be Fenric's doing. But Oh, know. wow, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... I don't think that's necessarily them trying to play it off like, oh shoot, they can see the the, the blue sky in the background, but maybe it is, I don't know. It feels like it is. <laughs> yeah, Ace reveals that her grandmother has a chess set now. Like, we gotta go get yeah. that chess set. She doesn't know it's her grandmother, by the way. The way we've been saying it kind of implies that she does, but she doesn't. Yeah. I thought that she did when her grandma and baby mom <laughs> escape, and she, she kisses the baby... And says, I love you. And I was like, oh, okay, she knows it's her mom. No, she um, hates her mom. <laughs> I know, but I thought this was like her maybe coming to terms with her mom. Like she saw her mom as a baby and she's like, you know what? Maybe I don't hate you anymore, mom. Well, she does have that moment later, later but I thought it was now. Out, yeah. I thought it was now. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then later she's like, they're like, that baby was your mom. And she's like, what? No. I feel that's like. That's not possible. Okay, no. <laughs> She kind of does that, but I thought she would have figured out when she told her grandma to go to this house where her nan is, and I'm like... Yeah. I, yeah, that, that also kind of indicates that she she knew, but uh, apparently she had to search her feelings before she knew it to be true. <laughs> yeah, because doesn't she also mention, like, when she meets them that her granddad died in World War II? Doesn't she I don't... That? In Dragonfire? No, 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 in the Sioux, when she meets... Uh, Oh, maybe. I don't remember. I don't know. I feel like she did, but maybe she didn't. Yeah, so they get the chess set, and the doctor sets up the puzzle, and Fenric tries to solve it, and he's, I guess, weakened yeah, Fe- by it. Fenric is body jumped, by the way. Well, he's in Judson. He jumps into Soren now, because Soren comes in to confront oh, Judson. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. And that's uh, that's how right. <laughs> that's how he gets the solution from Ace because Ace doesn't want to tell Fenric the solution, so she tells it to Soren because she thinks it's still Soren, but it's actually Fenric. Oh, all right. I guess I just missed all of this, but sure. Oh yeah, Soren gives Ace that uh, sick communist Russia pin for her yeah. jacket. <clears throat> um, yeah, this this Russian and English soldier team up, and then Ace is like, "Oh, yeah, that's the solution to the chess puzzle." I'm like, "That's not how chess works." Um, there's this weird, uh, line that felt, felt really out of place, um, where, where one of them just goes, they're talking about something maybe kind of related, but felt like it was completely different. And then all of a sudden one of the soldiers goes, war, a game played by politicians. 
we were just the pawns in that game, but we're pawns no longer, or something like that. <laughs> Great. Yeah, the whole scene was pretty clumsy. Because <laughs> then they're like, now the pawns fight together, and then they like do this arm grab handshake, and they're like, we're together now. And they mention like, or I think Ace mentions that the black and white pawns in the in the chess game um, aren't necessarily enemies and. I don't know if that's true. Like, I don't that's play chess that, that much. No, that's not how that works. But I'm uh, pretty sure they are enemies. Yeah. No, well, she comes in and she tells Soren, like, the white and black pawns team up. And Soren's like, thank you, Soren <laughs> Fenwick. And he solves the puzzle and the doctor's like, ah, dang it. <laughs> now I have to think of some other great chess puzzle. Also, that's not allowed, Fenwick. That's not how chess works. Oh, well. But yeah, so Fenwick has... I don't, I don't play chess much, to be honest. I'm pretty sure I've lost, like, every game I ever played. <laughs> Mainly because I make every move in, like, less than half a second. So, that, you know, that might have something to do with my losing streak. Not but... a strictly bad strategy, <laughs> but uh, definitely not a good one. <laughs> if you were playing Blitz Chess, that'd probably be a pretty good strategy. <laughs> don't you have to? Yeah. But... Play? I don't know what Blitz Chess is, but it just sounds like really fast chess. Well, yeah, so you either play, you can play chess untimed, or you can play, uh, you play it with a timer. And when you play with a timer, you, there's multiple different ways to time. Like, you get a, you yeah, get 10 minutes for each side, the whole game. And Yeah, I know, I know all or, the, like, timer rules, and, like, the, I know how the pieces move, obviously, but, like, I'm just really bad at it. So I don't know why I know, like, all the rules and regulations and stuff, and looked so much into not? it. I don't know, yeah, it's why a, not? It's a useful skill to have. Chess is one of the <laughs> oldest games in the world. I well, I learned from. I know one taught me how to play. I just learned from watching my cousins play. So I guess I think that also has something to do with how bad I am. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, this isn't a chess podcast. Could be though. Although I don't know what we we're talking about. We could turn it into one. This week, the world on of pro uh, chess. No chess, your doctor. Oh god. <laughs> anyway. Ace and the doctor at Fenwick's mercy, and he's like, well, I'm going to kill you guys with the Ancient One, and then the Ancient One gets stopped by Ace's faith in the doctor, and then Fenwick's like, all right, new plan. I'll kill Ace um, if you don't kneel at my knees, doctor, but if you do, I'll let Ace live, but I'm going to kill you either way. Yeah. Um, But we didn't mention the Ancient One's costume, which looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks kind of like uh, there's all sorts of weird... Carl kind of growing on his face. Carl yeah. slash mold <laughs> all over his face, kind of bluish. Looks pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Soren gives him this, like, ultimatum, and the doctor's like, all right, kill her. Do it. You're not, <laughs> not going to do it, Soren. You wouldn't pull the trigger. No, he, he, actually, he doesn't say that. Well, he, <laughs> he doesn't say that, but he's actually correct. Because <laughs> Soren's like holding the vial of gas right next to Ace's face. And then when the dog says kill her, he just brings it back. And he's like, so you'll let her die. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, because I knew you would do that, you dumbo. <clears throat> There's actually, now that I think about it, I feel like making the gas green was an intentional choice because Fenwick's eyes are green. So I feel like that was intentionally made to tie in with each other, the gas being green and Fenwick's eyes being green. I don't know, but... Sure, let's just go with that. I mean, it seems right, but there's also the idea that green just looks like this noxious gas color, yeah. so there's that too. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, then then Ace goes on this... Uh, well, not Ace, sorry. The Doctor goes on this thing about Ace, about how she's uh, emotionally emotionally compromised and... A terrible person. Well, he doesn't say he's a terrible person. He says she's a social outcast and she can't even fail. She can't even pass a chemistry test. How could she possibly have made a time storm inside her bedroom? I saw you all along, Fenwick. You dumbo. <laughs> and Fenwick's like, right, oops. And then right, because now they reveal that everything since Dragonfire supposedly was the doing of Fenwick. Yeah, Fenwick, like, transported lady... Pain fort to the From future, silver nemesis, so that she would get the thing, <sighs> she would get the bow and arrow, the bow and arrow, so she could have the statue. And basically, Fenwick manipulated Ace into becoming a companion of the Doctor because Fenwick wanted to use Ace against the Doctor. She has now. like, she has like the curse of Fenwick inside of her, or whatever. Yeah. So the Doctor breaks Ace's faith in him. The Ancient One uh, turns on Fenwick probably because of that speech the Doctor gave. The ancient one before, where the doctor's like, in the future, your world will be destroyed thanks to Fenric. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. 
the ancient ones like Odon. So both the ancient one and Fenric get gassed. Although they're probably still alive. Yeah. Their bodies get destroyed, but uh <laughs> But their souls the beings live on. inside live on. Yeah, probably. Uh, apparently later on it's retconned in uh, that Fenric and the Ancient One are part of the beings, the great old ones, which also includes the great intelligence and the animus from the web planets. So Yeah. Well <clears throat> it's sort of a And this is your toy maker. <laughs> Sort of like a reasonable, I guess, conclusion to come to, um, considering his name's like the Ancient One, so it's the Great yeah. Old Ones, I don't know. The Great Old Ones. Oh, yeah, the gods of Rad- Ragnarok are Great Old Ones, too, apparently. Yeah, I, I read that um, there, were, there were a lot of mentions to, like, the um, the the concept of Ragnarok in Norse mythology, which mm-hmm. I don't know what that is exactly, it's, but... I mean, it's kind of like, it's like, it's a, kind of like the Norse version of the apocalypse. Um, That's a reductive view of it, but... Uh, okay, uh, well, yeah, apparently they took out all those uh, mentions of it because uh, they didn't want to confuse people with the gods of Ragnarok. Which, when they said it, would have had a year ago. I mean, still. Like, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Ace is really upset with the Doctor, as she should be, because the Doctor kind of just called her emotionally compromised. And the Doctor's like, I had to break your faith in me. Yeah, I don't know but if it I- was just me um but i felt like this happened maybe too quickly like it's right after i don't know what else they would have done with it but maybe like draw it out a a little bit more i don't know i don't know if that would even be good but well eh. it it might feel so compressed because because it was overrunning by the whole serial had 12 minutes of overrun so they cut a whole bunch of stuff out so it probably ended up getting a lot more compressed than they intended it to be yeah maybe the doctor's like i didn't mean any of that you wouldn't be my companion if i didn't like you like, and then Ace is left to wonder: Was he kidding or not? I feel like he's kidding. Well, <laughs> not I mean, kidding, he, not kidding. Not yeah, so not much kidding. But in that, he doesn't actually believe it. I don't know. They walk no, off. No, it's pretty. Yeah, it's, it's pretty obvious that he didn't. Yeah. Believe any of that? Like, <laughs> but there's still a the, doubt in, in the back well, of your in mind. The mo- in the moment, it se- it seemed like he might have believed it, but like the way Sylvester McCoy plays it, he. Because the Seventh Doctor is usually kind of boisterous and really loud when he's talking, but when the Doctor's talking about Ace, he's like really quiet and maybe it's all part of his ploy. Um, so it seems it seems like eat them. No, <laughs> <laughs> it seems like the what way. What do you think happened to Dodo? <laughs> oh my God! Well, the Doctor just ate Dodo. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! <laughs> um, no, but the way the doc- the way McCoy's playing it is that he's playing it off like the doctor's unsure of what he's saying, but he's trying to play it off as it's like he's really confident in what he's saying. Yeah, I mean that's pretty obvious. It was just a <clears> stupid <throat> joke, but yeah. Um. On my part, the thing about like the doubts <laughs> in the back of your mind, yeah. <laughs> but maybe I don't. Uh... Um, and I guess they come out of it stronger friends for it, I suppose. Yeah, he just goes swimming at the end, so I guess she got over her. Yeah, the doctor's really helping Ace get, get she gets over pulled, her fears. She gets pulled in by the dangerous undercurrents and swept away now. <laughs> well, the doctor says there's no dangerous undercurrents now that the ancient one isn't living in that lake anymore. <laughs> Wasn't it the ocean? No, oh, yeah, the it? ocean, sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> the Vikings landed in a lake. No? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe the boats like phased through the land into they this got, lake. They got some sick air off a ramp and landed <laughs> in a lake. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Yeah, I guess. Kind of a seems sort of feels like a dumb and contrived thing that she's like, I don't want to go swimming, and at the end she jumps in. Yeah, she's but getting hey. over her fears. I, f- uh, I guess a theme of this season is the Doctor helping Ace get over her fears of things like. Uh, yeah, kind of seems sort of uh, patronizing in a way, but hey, I've used that term to describe the Seventh Doctor before, and it seems to be a recurring thing. But yeah, I guess it's a good thing. I don't know. <clears throat> She's uh, pretty strong-willed, so uh, yeah. It's she doesn't take any obvious. of the doctor's nonsense. Halfway halfway through the serial, the doctor's not telling you anything, and she like blows up at the doctor about not telling you anything. And the doctor's <laughs> like, "Yeah, I guess I should tell you right now that Fenric is an ancient evil that's existed since the beginning of time, and we should probably stop him." <laughs> and Ace is like, "Oh, why didn't you just say that?" And the doctor's like, "Because I don't have enough time." Yeah, it kind of makes you wish that Ace was a uh, you know third or fourth Doctor companion, but uh, <laughs> what? Who said that? <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, yeah, 
That's how the studio ends. Actually, they they don't even go back to the TARDIS. It ends with them walking off like into the sunset. I'm <laughs> and I'm. Yeah, main, mainly because the TARDIS God doesn't know where. <laughs> I was gonna say it doesn't exist. That's just the inside. But yeah, they ejected the entire inside like Romana's room that one time. <laughs> <clears throat> wow, only so, one uh, serial to go. Yeah. Feels kind of surreal, actually. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know it's ending, but it's just like, feels like it might continue forever. I feel like that's what everybody <laughs> at the time felt. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's what I understood of this serial, I actually enjoyed it. So. Yeah, I, I did come away, like I mentioned before. Saying like, "Wow, I really want to rewatch this serial when I'm actually paying more attention." <laughs> I feel like we covered pretty much all the plot points. Uh, yeah, I think we actually did a surprisingly good job of it compared to what we thought we might, we might do. But hey, yeah, I mean, it's always impressive what you remember. When, <laughs> it's always impressive when, you're <laughs> <laughs> when you can grasp and somehow hopefully <laughs> get right. Maybe haven't we specifically said before we? We strive for accuracy, but don't always achieve it. Vague accuracy. Yeah, speak for yourself. Yeah, mister, I like to mess <laughs> everything up. <clears throat> you can email us at thedoctordecadivegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry rants, love letters, your thoughts on Fenric and the Great Old Ones. Fenric shows up in a audio drama, actually. Actually, they have this whole overarching plot in some of the audio dramas about Fenric. Was Fenric really a worthy villain to give an overarching plot to? I don't know. Um, find us on YouTube, iTunes, and Google Play, all at Trust Your Doctor. And provided everything has gone to schedule and Blue Box podcast number 250 actually released on time. Uh, probably did. Probably did. I would expect it would, but... You never know. Uh, yeah. I mean, actually, we don't know, because this is a week before the episode is going out, so we actually don't know if it's gone out on time. But if it does, you should check it out, because we are on there. We're not gonna and we're the main attractions. Don't listen to any of the other sections. Please, just listen to us. No, <laughs> no, 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 actually, no. listen to the whole thing. There's yeah, it'll of, probably be pretty cool. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting, great podcasts. Our buddies, Flight and Tidy and Crinoid Podcast are on there. For yep. Future Doomsday Radio, Free Scarrow. Um, and a bunch of other podcasts I'm not remembering at the moment, but... Yeah. We all did a little mini-episode. We're not going to tell you what we did. You should just go check it out and find <laughs> out. Yeah, also check us out on Facebook, Trust Your Doctor. Like us on Facebook and check us out on Twitter at TYD Podcast and follow us on Twitter. And next week we watch the ironically named Survival. But until then, <laughs> the end. <laughs>